All right. Good afternoon, guys. This is going to be my first Lionel repair video. And today I'm going to start with the motor from an 1120 Lionel Scout. I know a lot of people have a lot of problems taking these, uh, repairing these, not taking them apart, but actually putting them back together can get kind of tricky. So that's kind of what we're going to focus on today. So let's get started. First, I'm just going to show you some of the tools that you're going to need. All I use is just a regular flathead screwdriver, a pair of needle nose pliers, and some 3M green scrub pads. These actually came from a dollar store. Uh, you don't need to get the actual 3M ones. And what I do is I take those big squares and I just cut them down into much more manageable sizes, even going as small as this to clean any of the parts, armatures, whatever. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is we are going to have to take the wheels off of here so that we can actually separate the body because with these wheels and a clip on the front and on the back are what holds this casing actually together. So the last tool I want to show you guys is my wheel puller. And what this actually is, is a faucet handle puller from the plumbing section of a Home Depot or any hardware store. Um, this is just as effective as the actual Lionel wheel puller, but much easier to get your hands on and definitely much cheaper. The only modification that you'll have to make to it is get yourself a file or a grinder or someone that has a grinder and grind the thickness of these fingers down. Because uh, when you get it right out of the package, they won't fit in between the wheels and the body of any of the trains. But you grind them down, and it works perfectly. And that's the first tool we're going to use today. And what we're going to do is we're going to hook this under the wheels of the Scout. And I tend to use the geared side because there's a lot more room to get the wheel puller under the, the wheel itself. So we're going to back this out, like this, line it up over the axle, like so, and just crank it. And it'll pop that wheel off fast and easy. There you go. So that's one wheel out. Just put those up and off it comes and that wheel puller it works with all of my line of locomotives 2055 681 2046 all of those so we got the wheels off and now we're going to hold the casing with the gears facing up and the reason we do that is because all of the parts inside of this casing are just loosely sitting in there uh, nothing is screwed down, nothing is clipped in, it's just all kind of free-floating in there. And they're actually seated in the bottom half of this casing. So, <clears throat> what we're going to do is we're going to keep the gear side up. We're going to pull these clips off and they just come off by hand. And then we can lift up this half of the casing. And there you go. There's the inside of the Scout motor, right? Pull all this stuff out. Pull out the armature. Okay. I'm not going to dismantle it completely. We really don't need to do that. But I can just show you guys how the parts are just sitting in here. Like nothing, nothing is screwed down. Nothing is clipped. This here is the magnet, which is actually your magnet traction. And obviously that just sits in that hole. And that's that done. Okay, this is your, your pickup spring. And the actual pickup rollers are just held in place by that spring over top of this little knobby post thing here. Okay, so that's how they sit in. Now, this spring here goes through the center of this 
piece, which is actually the uh, directional switch sits on and moves up and down to change the direction of this Lionel. So what we're going to do, and it just sits again, it just sits right into this slot. Nothing holds it in, it just sits loosely, but we do need to run this spring through it. Okay, so what we're going to do is get that spring in position. And actually, this sits in this way. So this end goes in first. So we're going to do that. Put it in there. I'm going to go over and get some needle nose pliers. You could actually use your fingers here, which probably would be a little easier because there is a lot of room here. So we're just going to put that through like that. Put it back over its post and that's hooked up. So there you go. And as you can see, there's your brushes sitting in there, but we're going to leave them in for the time being. Now, the next piece that we're going to put back in, you can just take your thumb off and that's going to hold in place is this silver part and these posts here fit right into this slot here okay so once again it just drops in like so and it sits on top of this brass arm okay so that's all set up now we have our armature that we're going to put in it's got a little bit of dirt on it it is actually pretty good, <clears throat> but since it's out, we're going to give it a bit of a clean. And that's when I call on my little green scotch pads. So just give it a light scrub. I don't, I don't put any cleaner on it. You don't have to. Just a, a light, light scrubbing keeps everything clean and it doesn't wear the armature down. Okay. And the armature, whoop, this shaft here drops right into a hole right at the bottom in here. Okay, there you go. There you can see it there. So this just drops straight down, and then the brushes, of course, rest on those copper plates. There we go. So that's all back into place now. Everything's all set up. Now... The tricky part is getting this all back together. I picked up a few tips and tricks and I can actually get this back together fairly easily. One of them is right here. So this is your directional switch, okay? And it sits up at the top here, just sits over on a post, okay? Now, every time you will try to put these two halves together, this thing will just fall off because it's just sitting loosely. And you'll get frustrated, and that's, I think, why a lot of these motor housings end up getting thrown in the garbage. And there's so many scout shells kicking around. So what I do is I just get a little bit of Vaseline or petroleum jelly or whatever you call it. Just put a little bit on a Q-tip. Put it on the post, and it's going to act like a glue. A nice temporary glue and you can just mash that on there and it's going to hold okay and the other thing is the position of the switch having it point away from the front of the housing that's actually where it should sit okay so slanting away from the front of the housing, and we know this is the front because this is actually where a headlight would go if the 1120 had the headlight, but it doesn't. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to put the two halves together. So one of the tricky things is keeping this brass arm relatively straight up and down and then lining up the gear of the armature into the gears on the other side and another thing I'm going to show you quickly is that brass arm actually fits right into this slot here so it is tapered inwards so if the arm does catch one of the edges it will kind of shift itself right in so that's not a problem these gears are a problem
Okay, sometimes you gotta give them a little twist to make sure they line up properly. The other thing, if you notice, is there's posts sticking out, male posts on this end, and then there is the female receptacle ends in here. So that's the other way you know you got the whole thing lined up properly. So let's do it. Let's put it back together. And always keep this obviously straight, because if you tilt it or turn it, everything's just going to fall right out on you. All right? So just going to drop that on. There we go. It's all lined up. Armature's locked in. Yeah, there's something right there, and I believe it's our little directional arm. Okay, oh, this fell out. This is honestly where a lot of the frustration comes in with these things, but like I said, it's a little bit of patience, a little bit of playing around. Right away I noticed that this arm here was just a little bit too low. It had slipped out of its own position too far. See how it just kind of flops around? So got that. Our Vaseline is still holding our directional switch in place, so we're good there. There it is. Okay, so it was just that brass arm just needed to be moved a little bit. We put our clips back on. We can run the axles through the holes. We can put our wheels back on, and we're going to be good to go. Something in the way there. Nothing's in the way. There we go. Okay. Let's do that. Give it a little bit of push with the hand. Saw that. Another one on this side. So that one's pretty worn, so it just kind of popped right back into place. This front wheel, I am going to have to push it on a little bit. And I've got a quick little solution for that, and I will show you guys right now. And I do this for all of my Lionel trains. So the one thing you want to make sure of when you are putting this back together is you do not want these wheels to go on too tight. If they do, they will bind up all the gears and the motor will, won't be able to drive the, uh, drive the wheels. So keeping it fairly slack is good, but you do want it to mesh up with the gear a little better than that. So what I do is I use the corners of the vise. I line them up as best I can with the centers of the wheels, since they're the strongest points. You're not gonna warp the axle at all. And as you can see, just a little squeeze puts it right in place. Okay, and that's it. That's that back together. Okay, now I'm just gonna get the vise out of the way. Under this cover are two gears that contain the brushes and they have to be placed in the same, in, in the proper order and lined up properly as well or this thing will not run. So we've got these two gears in here and there's a contact spring up top and there's a contact spring on the bottom. The gear that's facing towards the front of the locomotive, and again, we know this is the front because there's the headlight assembly. This gear has much pointier teeth on it than the other one. They're very easy to distinguish from each other. So we're just going to pop this out like that. Okay. This is the one that stays to the front of the locomotive. The other one, as you can see, the teeth are more blunted on it. They're squared off. So they're very easy to distinguish the two. So the blunted one stays towards the back. The pointed teeth gear stays towards the front. Let's get that out of there. And the other thing I found with these 
is how they line up. So you can see that there are brass sections and then the, the plastic spacing. What I always found was the front gear, if you line it up so that a brass section lines up with a blank plastic space, you're not going to have any problems at all. I don't know exactly why that works, but that's the way it does. I've had it where they're lined up like this and the sucker won't run, okay? So this is another crucial spot. There are some mark timing markings or position markers on here, these little holes. I don't really use them that much. Uh, so, I mean, you can if you want. It's up to you, but you want brass to blank. That's how I think of it as. So I'm going to put the brushes back in here. Just drop in like that. I'm going to have a look at these springs, okay? And as you can see, it does have a hole in the center, and there's a, a little protrusion or a tab sticking off the one side of it. Inside the housing itself, I don't know if you can see this too well, but there is a little tab here on this brass piece. You want the hole to fit over top of that, and you want... The brass, this little brass tab sticking off of this to face into the motor housing. Okay, so it'll slide over, the hole slides over the tab in the housing, and this protrusion sticks inwards to the, towards the housing, and that will be the proper position of the spring. Now, the one other thing is, before you put these gears back in, you have to make sure that little brass tab that was causing all the problems, it's still going to cause some problems. There it is right there. And again, this is the, the, the directional control for the Scout. Before you put the gears in, you want it out of the way. So just flip the switch. It'll pull itself out of the way. Again, gears with the point. There it goes. Blunt teeth gears at the back, like that. And like I said, we are going to line up a brass section to a blank plastic section here. Okay. And now we can lock these gears in place by pushing back on the directional control. And you can see the brass tab coming and engaging and onto the teeth here. Try to get it into the light. There we go. Okay, you see that coming in? And it'll just lock and hold it in there. I still hold the gears down with my thumb because the springs on the brushes will pop them up. All right, so here we go. We're going to get these fingers on there, the contact spring. So like I said, it's just slipped over the tab. You might have to use a screwdriver to help guide it. And be very careful with these contact springs. They are very thin, very easy to bend, and once bent too much, extremely easy to break. So I'm going to put the bottom one on, and that one just dropped in perfectly. So I still keep my thumb over both of the gears to hold the whole thing down, and the way I put the cover plate back on and I just kind of slide it over top so that nothing pops out again. And there we go. Now I can drop my screws on here. Like so. And I just bottom the screws onto the cover plate. I don't over tighten it. Because this plastic is old and it can crack very easily. And you really don't need to tighten anything down super tight. And there it is. There's the scout motor all back together, and I'm just going to set up a piece of test track here, and we'll see if we actually did get it back together properly. Okay, so we got our test track all set up. I've got the motor that we just freshly repaired set up on it, and we're going to give it a test run. So I've got my tester here. Say hello. Hi. And he is going to be at the controls and run the train up and down the track. So we make sure we got, first of all, a working motor. Second of all, that both forwards and reverse direction actually works. So, Mr. Assistant Engineer, take it away. Give her some juice. Okay. That's 
that work? We've got forwards, runner, and we've got backwards. Let's try it again. Forward. Okay. And backwards. Perfect. Well, I think we have a working scout. What do you think? Yeah. So now we get to put him back on the track. And we get to have a little bit more fun with them until the next cleaning. What do you think? Yeah. All right. So let's take her home. Bye, guys. Thanks for watching.